Hallelujah. Glory be to the Almighty God. Blessed be His holy name. Why the wait? Why many people burden down with all different kind of unnecessary things in their life, unnecessary stuff in their life, weight that have no need to be carried because Jesus Christ would have already bore them for us. It is understandable when an unsafe person, an unregenerated man, a man who is not yet born again, to burden down with different things. But when a Christian, a regenerated man, who born of the Spirit of God, who now have in him the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, when that man has been burdened down, it leaves a lot of bitter taste in the mouth of many. It caused a lot of questions to be asked. What did Jesus did? Did he really finish the work? Is this Christian pathway, pathway really make sense? Is it really a victorious one? Is this Christian pathway really a victorious one? As the Lord Jesus Christ has made it clear and the Holy Spirit through the, the apostles make it clear unto us. Every Christian can walk in a victorious life in freedom and liberty where it is light. Light in the sense that they have not burdened on themselves with different and necessary things in life. Because they have come to the understanding that Jesus Christ would have already died for them, sacrificed for them, paid the price for them, the cost for them. Hallelujah. And I call them unto him to show them his glorious plan of salvation. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Your victory your victory made simple today by his holy grace. In the book of St. John, St. John chapter 8, we read a few verses here. We read from verse 30, verse 31, and verse 36. As he spake these words, many believe on him. Verse 31 now. Then Jesus then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Glory be to God. Verse 36 said, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free. Indeed, this is an amazing statement. He said, if the Son shall make you, make you free, if the Son shall make you free, you and I, hallelujah, must experience freedom. Why the burden? Why the weight is our theme here today that we look on what we are looking at we expect individual to understand the fundamentals of the gospel of jesus christ that each one of us will respond to that call we respond to the call of the resurrected christ we respond to the call that make us who he said we would have been in him because we respond now we respond, yes, and we, yes, regenerated, reborn, born again in victory and in triumph, in triumph, in respect to our spirit. However, we have to know a few things to walk it out. First, we must know that no bandage comes from God, and God is not a heart of confusion. Therefore, no form of, no form of negative in our life is not 
from our God. He make it abundantly clear in the book of James. He said, let no man say when he's tempted that he's been tempted of God because God cannot tempt no man with evil. As a matter of fact, he make it clear. He said, we must make sure that we pray not to enter into temptation. Therefore, he expects us to come to the place and the realization to recognize that there will be challenges in life. Therefore, not to go about trying to open doors to our life and to give the enemy easy access. Neither for us to believe that in our challenges or difficulty, he is the one who is the heart of our pain. So there must be no confusion here concerning the scriptures and concerning what God is about. When they respond to his call in the book of St. John chapter 8 and verse 30, he tell them who believe on him that they, when they continue, he said verse 31 now, then he said, he said to those Jews that believe not, believe not, believe. I mean, they already believe on him. He tell them a secret. Here is the secret, beloved. He said, if, that means he gives them the negative English word now. If, that means it's dependent on you. It's not me who call you. I already call you unto liberty. I already call you unto freedom. Because others are said in the scriptures, Corinthians there, chapter 3, that where the spirit of the Lord is, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So there must be understanding from every believer that that is what they are called unto. Freedom, liberty, in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, anything otherwise, anything contrary, they must not be tolerated. It must not be accepted. It must not be received as something that is good and believe is God tempting you or causing your pain. No, your God is a good God. And he make it clear he cannot confuse himself near the scriptures. The scriptures are the final authority of God. So let us get every negative out of our mind, whatever we may have against the scriptures, wherever we may hear it from. And make it be abundantly clear that God is not the heart of our pain. He's not behind our pain wherever he is there must be experience of fullness of joy so here he said it here now in the book of St. John chapter 8 and verse 31 it caused him to understand and every individual to know that the responsibility of our freedom the freedom that we're supposed to walk into as a now as not setting free but making free instead of making free the Dependent on the man's responsibility in respect and regard to how we will, will be open up to the word of God. So he said, when you and I continue, continue, if you continue in my word, the result will be, then you and I will definitely become his disciple indeed. We'll become his disciple is indeed. And how are we going to become a disciple? What the result of his disciple? Like is one we have looked at there. Only one step. Verse 20, verse 30, verse 32. In verse 32, he said, And he shall know the truth. This is good. So when we know the truth, he said, The truth make us free. Know what he said, you know. He did not say when you pray, he did not say when you fast. He did not say when you cry long enough. He did not say when you blame God. He did not say when you question God. He said, you shall know the truth. Therefore, if the truth is not set forth clearly, if you don't receive the truth of salvation correctly, he's saying you will not be able to experience the freedom and with, unto which you are called. So we are called unto freedom, we are called unto liberty, we are called that all the way it must go. However, we must understand with work, beloved. One, we were set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we respond to that salvation. God has set us free. We respond, we become saved. We become a Christian. Now, he said this now. It changed. Listen very carefully. After you believe in verse 30, we believe already. Now the progress continue. And we move on to verse 32. And he shall know the truth. Note, you know the truth now after.
that you are saved. So you grow in truth. You progress in truth. Who am I? Who do I become? What do I have? What do I don't have anymore that I had before? Who is my Lord? What does it mean? What is the blood? What does the blood done for me? What is Jesus Christ's name meant to me? How to use Jesus Christ's name? How do I keep my vessel? How do I walk in victory? All these things. What is righteousness? What is true holiness? How do I carry myself? How do I close open doors? We are talking about the weight, beloved. Showing Christian that there is no need for weight. However, if we do not know the truth, if we don't understand the Christian pathway, we will struggle unnecessarily and will blame God. It's not that you're not praying. It's not that you're not fasting. It's not that you don't have a good mind and really want freedom. But the Bible said the truth must be clear. The truth must be set forth because the truth of the word of God is going to make you free after this blood already set you free. Irresponsible for the setting of you free when you respond to him. And he did that already. Now, the making free, which is in your soulish realm, free from oppression, free from unnecessary addiction, free from things that held you before you became a Christian, free from biting, free from some little sinful action. How do I become free? He said, by knowing the truth. By knowing the truth. The confusion that many experience in their spirit, beloved, is when they already give their life to God, but they still find themselves experiencing unnecessary weight and bandage, though they want to be free. So this is the primary step after you receive the gospel of Jesus Christ and were set free, break loose by the power of his blood. No, he said, for you to be made free, you have to continue. You continue. And that is how you become his disciple. You are there. You're open to his word. Of course, you need mentorship. Of course, you need teachers. Of course, you need men and women of God who will choose to implement the things in the correct way. That's why we are showing us step by step in order for each of us to see where we violate the steps or the formulas that God put in place to see victory in order for us to recognize or diagnose where our defeat really comes from. Because it's been many confusion and it's not because your lack of prayer sometime. But do you understand how to pray, when you pray, what you're praying about? Is the word inside of you stirring up because you know the truth that this is your liberty in Jesus Christ. Verse 36, beloved. If the Son therefore shall make you free, he shall be free indeed. Though we're speaking about but remember now, Jesus Christ is the word of God become flesh. And he make it be clear for you to understand, beloved. So therefore, the word of Almighty God inside of you, which is Christ now, because he already set you free. He said he will complete the freedom by making you free. For you to experience real freedom, manifested freedom. That is what he's really talking about here. It is manifested freedom. That freedom that you would have, have now in your spirit. For it to be manifest out. For people to see it. For others to look on. And see that which you are experiencing. Or see that which you are going through. And recognize that wow. The beauty of Jesus is shining upon you. And shining through you. Wow. The beauty of Jesus is attracting somebody else. To come to Jesus Christ. To know him. That's not what he said in the book of Matthew chapter 5 didn't he make it abundantly clear he said you and thy light he said our oh, light shall show shine before men and they will see that beauty that good work and that will attract them to our father who is in heaven this is the beauty of the gospel of jesus christ that's in us and that manifests out of us and that now rests upon us so people see that joy that liberty that freedom we are not depressed we are not burdened down because sin is not always the problem that people suffer from and note carefully now sometimes it is weight not merely sin only listen beloved because a believer should not 
be suffering from sin. We know some believers suffer from sin bondage because they don't understand the gospel. We said many times before. However, that should not be the problem of any any believer. We must we, we may understand sometimes as we give and take if a believer struggling with weight because they don't understand how to close certain doors and how to walk in certain victory. So we see in Hebrews chapter 12 here, wherefore verse 1, wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with with so great a cloud of witnesses he said let us lay aside every weight know that word now why the weight that is what we're asking here lay aside every weight say so this is a this is something that is not gonna not going to be done by god we're trying to make this clear below what is god part and what is your part what is god part what is my part what is god part and what is our part so he did not say god is gonna lay our weight aside he said we oh hallelujah are the one who's supposed to lay those weight aside and after the conjunction and continuity and the sin which do it so easily beset us and let us run with patient the race that is set before us so many people can identify what we call physical sin manifested sin fornication adultery you know external sin but a man will have bad heart bitterness envy malice and forgiveness and if it doesn't manifest it's a sick dear sin way anger Except it manifests it's the same way. And this is what way down individual. These are internal sinful actions that they do not have to manifest for them to cause us problem. But they literally cause us to be burdened down, give the devil entrance to us, carry us or take us into different form of unnecessary bondage, depression, oppression, way that are not necessary manifest beloved and this is what we're kind of trying to focus on to show you that while the majority of individuals in the kingdom can identify what is a fornication what is adultery what is stealing what is robbery if it don't out, you know out, if it don't if it don't in an obvious way however the weight the weights that people burden don't buy are clearly being missed in the kingdom of god we are here to say to you, weight normally stem from one mental part and their emotion. And those weight are those things don't normally manifest for everyone to see them. But you're buckling them up. You're carrying them. Day and night under burden. It don't have to be that way. He said it's a responsibility of the one become his disciple. By then, or you become that disciple by diligently seeking God by applying yourself to cause the word of God to disciple you by the Holy Spirit or by humbling yourself before a mentor and by a good minister of the gospel who not just dealing with you based upon your deportment and your external manifestation but he can overlook those things and see that you are a person who really really do love God and that person will help you hold you by the hand and walk you into the victory that God Almighty have in store for you rather than allow you or leave you into that weight and bandage why the weight there must be no more burden beloved because god sent his son to set you free and when his son of god set free glory be to god he said that man must know that who god make free in jesus christ that man is free so walk in that liberty how do you do that now verse 2 of hebrews chapter 12 looking unto jesus who is a heart and the finisher of your faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross hallelujah despising the shame and is set is set down at the right hand of the throne of god you look into jesus Take your hand off your mind of your destruction. Take your eyes off your destruction. Take your eyes off the weight. Take your eyes off the little negative or whatever coming up in your life. Keep your eyes on the word of God. What did he say about you? That is what I want to set forth. I want you to bring your mind to. That what must be preached and you should be mentored by. He said, when your eye is set on Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of your faith, and you see how we did it. He do it by not become angry, 
not become malicious, not be that, no no grieving wasn't in his heart, no negative I meant against individuals or them wickedly, he could have, but he chose not to. So you and I, beloved, can choose not to, but we cannot look on the negative and expect to walk in victory. Look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus and cause our way to fall off you. Look unto Jesus and cause our way literally to come to zero in your life. Look unto Jesus. Because though you may not be out there murdering and killing people and doing any external things that others can see, many times people are buckled up and they cannot go forward. The enemy have different entrance to them because of unforgiveness and malice and envy and strife and evil thinking. Your mind must be clear, regulated by the truth of the word of Almighty God. He will keep you in perfect peace in, 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 in the book of Isaiah because your mind now will be stayed on him. And this is what I'm bringing to you, beloved, for your mind to be stayed on God Almighty who have called you from sin and from shame in order for you to walk in this freedom and this liberty and this victory in every era of your life, I mean. Every era of your life, in spite of all lying you in church, many people may not see and know what you're going through because you may be a minister or, you know, somebody who, who sing in the choir, somebody who they see as dignified and look extra nice. You spend many years in church. But listen to me, it's not God's will for any of us to be burdened down or to be back clean up and fear want to explode negatively. But it's the will of the Almighty God for us to rise up in victory because he promised us and he shows in his word what he has already done for us and how he have chosen us to walk in victory in victory no more burden no more weight no more negative to cram our minds but we choose now to set our affection we focus our mind as Colossians said here, and the things of God. We set them on things above. We want our meditation to be true and pure of God and God at all times. We are flushing the negative from our system, beloved. We can't th think evil if we choose to. We can't think anything if we choose to. But we are choosing to do the correct thing, to break the weight. He said in Isaiah, he said, in that day, the anointing, shall destroy the yoke. That day referred to the day when Christ was expected to come. No, we already came. The yokes have been destroyed. No more yokes. The yoke has been destroyed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And he has redeemed and set us free. Now you and I respond to that call. Let us walk into that liberty and to that freedom. And he said, we, yes, will be his disciple indeed. Because we have chosen to follow him. His word that is. And who are close to his word that is. And stay close to his word that is. Now our prayers will be prevailing. Our fasting will be prevailing. Our tarrying will be prevailing. Our earnest going to church will be beneficial now. Because we will see productivity, change, growth, maturity and confusion. Would be a thing of the past. No more weight. Lighten your shoulders. And walk in this victory that Jesus Christ himself have purchased for you and I. We are from a free father who, res who we resurrected Christ that is in victory and in power. And whatever the thing is, it has no right to a victory over us. Refuse to be defeated. Refuse to walk under any negative weight. Refuse to go under any burden. Refuse to stay down and choose to walk in victory in the name of Jesus Christ. No more weight. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I declare that the weight that you're struggling with will be broken. Totally destroy. That thing that you're struggling with, I pray that you'll be totally gone by the power of the Holy Ghost and the blood of Jesus Christ. No more weight. I pray that that mindset, that mind-controlling devil, 
his power now is broken and the life of Almighty God spring forth and live out of you and through you. That thing that nobody knew about, we bring it to naught today. We bring it to zero this hour. We cancel it out your life totally. I pray that the Holy Spirit himself will minister the love and truth and grace of God unto you. And the blood of Jesus Christ that washed you, cleansed you and purged you from all sins will manifest through your life continually and you will walk into that freedom and liberty because I rebuke every negative depression. I rebuke every negative spirit. I rebuke every negative forces. I rebuke every oppressive forces in the name of Jesus Christ. The freedom of God is yours and I declare it over you now and declare over you no more weight in Jesus matchless name. Amen and amen. Walk in your victory and your triumph. So my and live a free life. Because who the son set free. Who the son made free. Who the son declared free. Who the son announced free. Is free indeed. Glory be to God Almighty.